Good morning, how are you doing, Jer? Yeah, pretty good. Um, one of the things that we wanted to talk to you about um, in particular was the strength of the back row options that Munster have at the moment and uh, how Jack O'Donoghue has suddenly found himself playing at seven and playing really well. Um, as a seven and somebody who fully understands exactly what that role entails, um, is there a future for Jack potentially? Is this maybe his best position? Yeah, geez, he, he looked very comfortable there the last day um, uh, against Chilon, you know, and obviously playing against real stiff competition um, and it's been thrown in there a little bit in terms of not having had a lot of, of game time this year. Um, but yeah, phenomenal performance. And I just thought the way he carried the ball was was um, was a big step up in, in where he's come from. I think, you know, obviously he, he's a young guy. He came in, he's quite, he's quite tall, very athletic. Um, and uh, the his ability, I think, in the in the in the tighter spaces to, to you know to get a bit of go forward ball, I was kind of was telling, I suppose, of of his transition into you know becoming, I suppose, that bit more of a mature player. Uh, he's obviously a guy, you know, in, in open field where you know if he gets if he gets half half a, a line break, you know, he's gone. He's got the the legs and the wheels to to go the whole distance of the pitch. But uh, I suppose you know in tighter games, um, you know, you you do need that ability to to be able to you know get that even half yard or half meter can be even more important. Um, and and he's he's he seems to be developing that size and that bulk and that bit of power as well. So. Um, but just in terms as well of, of playing the actual seven position, you know, he did not look out of place at all, and he he seemed to be thriving on it, and uh, you know, got a good standing ovation coming off as well. So he he he's a crowd pleaser as well too. But having said that, you know, with with all the injuries that we we we've had there in that position, it's it's great to see him kind of coming through, and um, it's may, maybe typical of of the way Irish rugby is at the moment, and in, in terms of Leinster and Munster especially. Um, how young guys have, have been coming in to, to fill the voids and uh, and not missing a beat, you know, just being, being um, you know, in fact, kind of forcing the envelope and, and, and really setting the standards. How difficult is that transition from one position in the back row to another? Um, is it more the rest of the world wonders, geez, how can you do that? They're so completely different jobs. And yet, actually, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, when you're kind of in training and you're looking at what everybody's doing and you're part of a conversation about the back row unit, it's not that weird a thing for players to be able to to play in multiple roles across the back row anymore. Yeah, no, and I, I think uh, you'd encourage any young player to try and play all, all three positions. Um, physically, look, they're all pretty much, pretty much the same, I would say, in terms of what you physically have to do in terms of tackling, in terms of, you know, you break down all that. I mean, that's, that's pretty much rounded, but uh, maybe maybe number eight, you, you might have to carry a little bit more ball off the base of scrum and a, bit of, a little bit more of a ball carrier. Obviously, six, you're, you're, you're in the trenches a little bit more. Um, and and as a as a seven, you're obviously trying to you know make that first breakdown, and it's it's, it's making sure that you're resourcing that ball, and that that first breakdown is, is coming back, and you're linking up with, with back. And so, there are different, I suppose, um, how would you call it? Uh, I suppose patterns to, to your play when you're playing seven and and, and six, especially. Um, and things are kind of flipped on their head a little bit. So you obviously, as a seven, you're getting to that first breakdown. Six, you're probably on coming around the corner and, and, and getting maybe sometimes getting your hands on the ball or, or, or uh, linking with the back line a bit off the second phase. But when you do switch, sometimes it can, it can kind of throw your head and you feel very much out of kilter at times when you're not used to it. Um, and uh, yeah, it, 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 it can be a difference. Um, but look, uh, sometimes you know you, you see guys. Um, I think with, with Quinny at times we used to play maybe a bit of left and right, um, and sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. Again, you, you can be a little bit out of kilter. But um, you, you often see guys changing in the back row, um, left and right. If there's a big uh, left hand side, um, open side uh, off a of scrum, you know it's it's a bit more challenging for a back row to cover that he doesn't have the the security of, of a number nine so sometimes you, you see see guys changing in that sense as well too but uh, yeah look more or less the positions you know once once you know the detail and you, you've run a few times of training you, you kind of get to the swing of it but at times of matches you can feel a little bit out of kilter all right if you're playing left and right was Quinny like here listen that's too big for me you can go off and do that so you've got that 40 <laughs> yards to cover well, let's just say he was very good over the longer distance and I was very good over the shorter distance. So we complimented each other. Okay. Um, yeah, if I had to run the length of the field sometimes, I, I mightn't make it past 30, 40 metres. So yeah, um, yeah, look, horses for courses, maybe. Uh, so it obviously seems like it's very doable to actually move between the positions in the back row. What about then moving from the second row to the back row or vice versa? Because if you judge by England in this year's Six Nations campaign, it seems like a very, very mm. tough thing to do. 
Yeah, I, I think teams do fall into that trap of um, you're you're a really good mobile second row. You 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 make it as a six. I mean, I think okay, you're. I think basically what that's saying is, all right, you, we we appreciate your your skills around the field, but it's a different element when you when you're playing six. You know, a, a very good uh, athlete at, at second row doesn't necessarily always make a very good six. It's a it's a big jump in terms of what you, you're asked to do around the field. Look, obviously, it gives you it gives you great scope at line out, and and uh, but you know, it seems to me that the ball doesn't play a lot more now, and maybe there aren't as many lineouts. Maybe a bit more secure in earning in, in earning your lineouts, and maybe what you do around the field is you, know, you look at the amount of, of rocks that Ireland would have had in this year's Six Nations. You know, that's that's a very important part of it, um, and being able to get that go forward ball, the amount of carries that Ireland would have had and teams would have had, is growing every year. So. The ability to be a good ball carrier, I think, is 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 massive and 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 be really punishing. I think sometimes at the breakdown and opposition's breakdown, um, which which big tall second rows mightn't necessarily always always bring that, you know. Um, so look, I suppose just thinking back to my days, you know, if, if I saw um, a long rangey kind of guy who's second row but good athlete playing at number six, you would always kind of licking your lips in, in terms of, you know, even just carrying the ball, you'd be able to get in underneath him, be able to chop him a bit easier in terms of, of it being able to tackle and wouldn't be as much of a threat carrying the ball. So um, I think, look, it's, 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 it's sometimes you've got to evaluate each player in his own merits, but certainly just thinking back, I would always love to see kind of tall, uh, lanky sec, you know, our back rows, you know, um, and it's oftentimes the, the, the likes of a Chris Clote who you're coming up against. That that's when you know you you've a real challenge. Some some of it of of his ilk in terms of you know really low, solid, hard to tackle. You know, very very good in the tackle, very aggressive at the breakdown. Gets gets in a good low position, powerful position, hard to shift and budge. Those can be the real tricky guys to, to play against. I think as as a back row. When were you uh, did, when, like when was it decided that you were a seven and and how did you actually end up improving to the point where that was the position that you wanted to play and felt most comfortable in? Um, it was a long process, really. Um, I played eight at school, um, played a bit of six, seven, and eight um, for the first good few years of, of my career, um, and I think it was it was probably when I was probably just I suppose back then it was very much on the line out. Um, you had really tall second rows, I think, or sorry, back rows at times because of the line out. You know, lifting wasn't as much of a of a thing then there was a bit of support in the line that's what you were allowed when it first came in and then it was uh, you know so height was was a big thing in the, in line with a lot of, a lot of kicks to touch and a lot of ball out of play so it it was important and and you had you know a, the, the kind of the odd odd guy like a Neil Back who was you know shorter and standard or in, in sorry in, in height and and um you know was was that I suppose that I seen at the time as a quintessential number 7 and and I suppose when I compared myself to the likes of, you know, Quinny or, you know, the, most of the back rows around, I would have been quite short. So seven was probably the position for me from a high point of view or back early days. And that's that's nearly where it was led to me going into that position. And uh, look, I think I, I probably wasn't the... I wasn't the the most natural of sevens in terms of, of being that, what they call that ground dog, you know, guy on the ground, uh, stealing ball and... and, and um, and getting in lower, I was I was a bit of a you know I was a ball carrier, and so I had to learn a lot of a lot of those things, and um, and obviously international camps and all that. We focused a lot in on that, and and um, Brian McLaughlin would have come in and done a lot of, of work with it with a net, and um, so we literally had to go in and and uh, you know body low body height and resource rocks, and it was it was full on high high attrition stuff, but uh, it was a real it was a real. Um, I suppose boot camp for me in terms of, of learning how to, to you know to, to be efficient at the, at the breakdown and rocks and um, but I think that was around kind of maybe mid twenties that that you know I decided that that number seven was my position um, and I suppose yeah pretty much stuck to it from there on you know I mean I, I probably would have liked to play it a, a bit more at eight but. Um, uh, you know, you, 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 I did get the chance to you maybe get a bit more ball in my hands from the base of, of, of the scrum and that. But um, yeah, look, seven, seven was something you, you I certainly grew into in terms of again learning the, the patterns and, and and being comfortable with you know how, how the game goes in terms of phases. You know where, where you should be and um, you don't feel lost and you feel very comfortable at, once you play there after a while and linking up with the back line and all that. It's it, it can be challenging, you know, sometimes off the tail and and and. Um, 
in in phase stuff where you, where you're trying to link in with with the back line has in that, terms of defence. Has that all changed now? Do you think where every member of the back row is trained to do the jackling and to also be a person who can run support lines if necessary? Or yeah, you know, like. That yeah, you, well, look, we saw Ty Furlong, now, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But if you were coming through the system now, that they would have trained you in 6, 7 and 8, and it, would have been, it wouldn't have been that big a deal to go in your mid-20s, OK, we've decided now, finally, we've, we've understood exactly who you are, that actually they would have understood who you were much earlier, but that you would have been able to do the 6 and 8 if, if required. Um, yeah, so, so your question is, is, I mean, yeah, I think it's less of an issue now in terms of... of I think most guys, uh, in, in most positions, they, you know, you're expected to do everything really, you know. Um, and some guys will excel a, a bit more than other guys. But you look at, you know, I think Hooker, you, know, you look at Rory Best, and you know, in terms of what he does in the breakdown, you know, he's he's probably one of, you know, if you if you had him as a seven, certainly, you know, ten years ago, you would have said he's one of the best in the world in terms of his ability to get in and poach, um, you know, and and uh, and upset upset um, uh, other teams, rock ball. Um, so yeah, I mean there is there is uh, there is, and again, look, I, I think same with with um, uh, you know the breakdown. I think it was always kind of a seven would always been criticised if if the breakdown ball was slow or, or you know there was a lot of turnovers or whatever. And um, you could say that maybe for first phase, but you know outside of that, it's it's a fifteen man job, so everyone needs to be you know really proficient at at, at resourcing ball and and uh, and also you know body fight in, in terms of trying to be able to poach as well because as again uh, you know phases go on for so long so it's it positions go out out the window a little bit in that sense in terms of you know multi-phase defense and attack so you have to be proficient at, at, at kind of multi multi things you know rather than you know this is the seven he does the he does the breakdown work um you know he might have the the, the heavy five um you know obviously doing a lot of rocks and the back staying out of it and you know, my early days, the backs would never have, uh, you know, or very rarely have have um, trained, you know, in, in training have, have 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 done any rock ball or physical contact around the around the rocks and that. It was always just very much a forward. The eights go off and, and do that. You know, the the, the eight pack of eight go off and do that. Um, you know, and, and you Drico and Darcy would have been really good at and kind of stood out. Um, as being the backs who were able to do that. And now, you know, all backs are expected to be really hot in that area. Yeah, definitely, especially in, in the Ireland side at the moment. Uh, just from your own experiences, how much is size a factor when it comes to actually uh, identifying talent and kind of shoehorning them into a position? Like you look at somebody like Jacob Stockdale, and I'm sure there would have been a temptation there when he had that growth spurt that we all know about in secondary school uh, to put him as a back row because he looks like a back row almost uh, until he was de developed into the body shape to become a wing. So I'm sure there was that temptation in and around Ulster to actually transform him into a back row after that growth spurt. Yeah, and it's funny because yeah, I'm, I'm coaching my nine-year-old now and under tens, and you know you see guys and you kind of think, are you you almost putting them into a position already? We don't play positions, but you know you kind of almost thinking, oh, he'd be a good second row, and you kind of say, well, you know, you got to play to at that age, you got you got to develop all the skills and, and see, you know, what where's best suited on the field and uh, height and and weight and and size. You know, you look at Bastardo in in a, in a, in a centre position there. You know, there's 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 outliers all around the international rugby in terms of maybe ten years ago you wouldn't have seen them in that position, and now and now you're seeing guys. You know, um, you know it could be six five, six six, and on a wing, and and you know heretofore they might have been, as you say, thrown in, into the second row. It could have been wasted. Um, in terms of their talent, their potential. So, um, yeah, look, I, I think, you know, as well, in, in terms of, of back row, it, it does change the whole time. You know, you look at Connor Oliver now, and he's a guy, another guy like, you know, Clote, they're, they're not tall guys, but they're really, really effective in their roles. And um, it's funny now, you, you look you look at the back line, and so oftentimes they can be they can be much taller than the, than the pack because, um, you know, you might be fielding, you know, balls from kicks and whatever, or, or you might be, um, you know, in, in the pack, you're, you're, you're obviously, you know, being low to the ground and all that, and be good ball carriers, which, which you're going to be doing a lot of in, in the tight, you know, being, being low to the ground can be, you know, very important. So, um, um, you know, being long rangey runners and being able to sprint the length of the field, you might suit the taller guys. So, it, yeah, it's it's funny how the game is, is changing in terms of body types, all right, and positions are changing in terms of body types. David, great stuff. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Cheers. Thanks, guys.